Welcome to the U.S. Farm Report, presented by members of the National Farmers Organization. NFO presents How Your Community Gets Its Money, with today's special guests, W.W. W. Butch Swain, NFO National Promotional Director, and Arnold Paulson, rural businessman from Granite Falls, Minnesota, who heads Minnesota Business and Industrial Promotional Agency. Family Farm Agriculture, the grassroots of America. Thank you for this opportunity to visit with you for a few moments. Today, I have as my guest Arnold Paulson, who heads up the Minnesota Business and Promotional Industrial Agency and has worked long and hard to work out the problem of how communities get their money, what they can do to better their position in our economy, and what it would take to help solve this problem that we're in. And I know some time ago, Arnold, we had you on a previous program, and you explained a little bit of how your community gets its money. And we've had numerous requests to go in and do a little bit more detail, to point out a little bit better and a little clearer how this is happening, or how this comes about, and why new industry won't solve our problem out here in rural America. Would you want to cover this just for a little bit, and then I've got a couple or three more questions I'd like to ask you. All right, well, thank you very much, Butch. Maybe we can start out by uh, using an illustration or telling how I became involved or concerned about the problem of agriculture. Uh, a few years ago, I was running a survey uh, on my own community to find out for myself exactly what effect the basic industrial payroll in our community had on the per capita income of the people living in our community. Now this is a very easy experiment for every community to work out, Butch, because all you have to do is take the total basic payroll of every industry in your community and divide it by the number of people living in your community, and you will arrive at the potential per capita income of the community providing all of these dollars are spent within the community. Now, I will have to admit that there is also a dollar turnover factor on this money, but nevertheless, this will give the average community an idea of how much potential per capita income they can receive from the industry within their community. Now, I mentioned the word basic industry. Basic industry means an industry that is manufacturing a product or a service within the community, but they export this product outside the community in exchange for dollars which are brought back into the community to buy the other goods and services that the people of the community must export from other areas. Now, I was amazed to find that if our community was going to live exclusively on the per capita income from basic industry, we could only earn approximately $400 a year per person. You mean this is in your community, right this in is, the town? Yes, this is in our community. Now, our community has been very success, successful in attracting new industry the last few years, and I would say, Butch, that we have as much industry as any community our size in the state of Minnesota, or at least on a per capita basis. And yet, we could only earn $400 a year per year, per person, uh, plus the dollar turnover, providing every one of these dollars were spent within the community. Now, using four people per family as an average, it means that we could only earn approximately $1,600 a year. Now, this is not sufficient for the people of any community to buy the goods and services that they need to live. So we wanted to find out where the rest of the money come from. And after searching every nook and corner within the community, we finally had to turn to agriculture to find out what effect farm income had on the per capita income of the people. And it was amazing, Butch, to discover when we take just the gross income of the farmers living on our mail route, and the reason we have to confine this survey to the farmers living on our, on our own local mail route is so that we don't uh, take some of the potential uh, per capita income away from neighboring communities. We discovered even with the underpayment of agriculture today that agriculture contributes four times as much as all, as our, as all of our basic industry combined. Uh, the 
Farm income contributed $1,600 per person, or approximately $6,400 a year uh, per family. And this is when I became aware, Butch, that agriculture is the key to prosperity for all of the rural communities, and that we cannot afford to underpay agriculture because agriculture is the well that creates or produces the wealth for every community to earn the new income to buy the goods and services that the people within these communities must have in order to live. But I would like to trace out for the people very briefly on the blackboard how these communities actually get uh, their money. And I think it's very interesting. We've done this once before, but there's been so many requests for a repeat that I don't think it will hurt Butch. And I would like to start this uh, illustration out by drawing a square which I say represents all of the large commercial banks throughout America. Now on one of our other broadcasts we referred to the point that today 1% of the banks in this country control 50% of all of the deposits or all of the assets that are controlled by the banking industry. Now, these are all of the large commercial banks in our large metropolitan areas. This other diagram represents the segments of our national economy. Starting out on the very lowest level, our smallest rural community. And as we progress through our economy, we must include all of the schools and our churches and county government, our state governments and so forth. But as we move down to the line, we come to the three large factors in our economy, the manufacturers, the processors, and labor. All very important segments in our national economy. But you will notice that this economy is incomplete. It can't possibly function because in order for the manufacturers and processors to employ labor in their plants, they must have resources with which to work. And so we must add the vast resources of our national economy. And here we must include all of the uh, oils, all of the minerals, chemicals, and so forth that constitute the resources that are consumed by our national economy. But we must also include agriculture, which is by far the largest industry in the United States. Agriculture actually represents 71% of all of the resources that are consumed by the entire economy each and every year. And this is why agriculture is the most important factor in our national economy. Now, how does your community obtain its wealth? Here we're living in a small rural community way at the end of our economy. How do we get the dollars out of the big commercial banks in our large industrial centers out to hometown USA? Now, there's only one way that these dollars are going to come to your community, and that's through the manufacturers and the processors who need these resources, who must have them to process in their plant in order to employ labor. So it's the manufacturers and the processors who go to the large commercial banks and draw out dollars and come out into the rural areas and exchange dollars for agricultural commodities and other natural resources. But here's what's been happening in our economy now for the past 15 years. It actually started back in 1950 or 51. The manufacturers and processors, and I'm not blaming them uh, entirely for this situation, but they have only been drawing out approximately 70 cents on the dollar as an average for the past 15 years in payment for the commodities that they use. But now when they bring the resources back to their plants. They now have the necessary items to employ labor. And they draw more dollars out, paying wages to labor. And the cycle begins. And the labor dollars are spent in the large cities. But you'll notice that they trickle back to the source from which they originated. But we still have this other major section of the economy that is still dormant. That is until the people the farmers and the people who obtain uh, wealth income from the resources that they produce come into the stores in our small towns and cities and spend their income dollars. And as these dollars start flowing through the economy, 
Then it brings the goods and services manufactured in the big cities out into the rural areas so that we have a continual flow of wealth. But here is what's been happening for 14 years in this, in this country. The 70 cents on the dollar that's been paid to agriculture has not been adequate for the American farmers to pay his operating costs, to pay his gas and oil and tires and rubber and to buy the fertilizers and all of the other essentials that he must have to run and operate his farm. So to cover up this shortage of income, the farmers have been forced to go around through the back door and to substitute credit in lieu of the shortage of in earned income. And these farmers are paying all the way from 6 to 36 percent interest, borrowing their own money, which rightfully should have been theirs, depending on how bad they get fleeced on the interest or the finance charges. But this isn't all, Butch. In addition to borrowing their own money to keep the economy going, they have to mortgage everything that they've earned during their entire lifetime, putting it up as collateral in order to borrow their own money back. And they take these borrowed dollars back and they come into the stores in the rural communities and they spend them. And as a rural businessman, we make just as much profit off of the borrowed dollars as we do off of the earned dollars. But here's what's happening, Butch, and this is why our economy is in trouble, is because this has been going on for such a long period of time, injecting credit into the economy to keep the thing going, that now the nation is running out of credit. And you will notice on that, that we can fast approach a point of no return. Let's assume that tomorrow fair farm prices were restored to agriculture so that the full dollar started to flow through the economy. This doesn't mean that these farmers would be able to spend that dollar because now the dollars will have to start flowing back the other way to pay off the loans. And this is why we can very easily reach a point of no return. If we wait too long to correct this situation, then we will head into an economic disaster that's unavoidable. And even the restoration of fair farm income cannot head it off. So I hope that I have been able to explain to you people how essential the payment or the income that's received by the people who produce natural resources is to the economic growth of our entire economy. And as long as these dollars are flowing freely, and as long as the producers of natural resources are getting equity of income, their fair share, it shuts off the credit spending. And then we have free dollars flowing through the economy. And this is what we mean by earned income instead of debt fuel income. And every time the farmer has to pay more money in interest, it takes dollars away from purchasing power. And those dollars accumulate into the hands of fewer and fewer people. And this is the situation where we find ourselves today. Where does your community get its money? It must come from agriculture. Agriculture is the magnet that draws the big city dollars out to your community. And it's the farmers that bring them into the town and to support the payment or brings in the dollars that are necessary for all of the people living within the community to earn an income. When farm dollars are shortchanged, it means there's a shortage of flow of income. It means that all of the people living in the rural communities then must either resort to credit or to use up their savings dollars. After the savings dollars are gone and after their credit's used up, then the only thing we can do is to reduce our standard of living. Instead of buying Chevrolets, we buy Volkswagens. Instead of eating steak, we eat hamburger. And this is exactly what's been happening in rural America. We have been lowering our standard of living. We have not been keeping pace because the wealth is not there. Butch, I hope I've explained this thoroughly I enough. think there's one thing that you failed to explain good enough, that when the farmer spends less and less dollars uh, that he receives, that then the fellow in town doesn't make as much as he's entitled to make, and he too has to go in debt. And this has gone all along the line, and finally it goes clear on up to the top. And this puts the money back into the hands of a few. As Kefauver said, our late Senator Kefauver said not too long before he died in 63, that in a few hands, and we have just a matter of a few years to solve this problem, or just a few will control all of America. And I think that this point should be brought out.
some rural communities, and I'm talking about rural communities, I'm talking about an entire county. Some of them run surveys to find out. I know of one that paid $2,000 for such a survey. And you know what they found out? That they only received into their community in 1964 only 42% of what they should have received, what they're entitled to receive, 42%. And I would say this, that all of rural America in the communities of 5,000 and under are living on less than a 50 cent dollar or half of what they're entitled to get. And this, folks, someday will lead to a complete entire collapse of our system. And there's no need for this because we can get together, set a fair farm price, set it in balance with cost of production, which will be based on labor and interest cost. In other words, put the farmer's labor price, put a price on his labor up in balance with the rest of society. This can all be averted, Arnold. And I know that you understand this probably better than anybody else in America. And you might tell them who really adopted this plan to bring this all about so that the money would be cornered back into the hands of a few. Well, a lot of people, Butch, are not aware of the fact that this is a planned program that's taking place. Uh, this isn't something that's happening by accident. I have in my hands here a program that's called an Adaptive Program for Agriculture, which has been published and presented by the Committee for Economic Development a group of 200 uh, businessmen, educators, and uh, uh, key people, bankers throughout uh, the United States. Now, most people are surprised when they discover that this program was developed in 1962, a five-year program for agriculture. But this is what the President of the United States was referring to in 1964 in the State of the Union message when he said that Two and one half million farmers must look elsewhere for a source of income. Now, I would encourage everybody to go to their local library or wherever possible to get a copy and to read of the plan to completely eradicate rural America. And the thing is that this program has been stepped up because Butch and I was in Washington just a few days ago and met with some very key people down there that are working very seriously and dedicated on this rural problem. They told us that we're no longer talking in terms of moving 10 million farm people out of rural America. Now we're talking in terms of moving 44 million people out into the metropolitan areas. They're no longer talking in terms of communities of 5,000 population or 2,500 population. Now we're dealing with the communities of 25,000 people. And the big problem and the big challenge to the metropolitan areas is what are they going to do with 44 million people migrating to their communities? People who are untrainable because of age and the cost factor. And now they're becoming very much concerned as a aide to one of the congressmen from New York asked the question, what can we do with all of these poor people moving into the metropolitan areas? Will they be able to provide the schools and the classrooms and the churches and the hospital facilities and the new residential developments? And who's going to pay the cost? Not the poverty-stricken people who are moving in, but the people who are living there, the people who are holding jobs. And this is why some people say that the Great Society program must be completely reversed, and that it's rural America that must be rebuilt, and that we must encourage people to live in the rural areas and rebuild the rural communities. But yet the only way that this can be done is if we restore the wealth and the income to rural America. And that must be done through agriculture. But here's the thing, as rural America erodes and as rural America surrenders itself by default because of the apathy and the complacency of the rural people, then what will happen to the uh, economy of the large metropolitan areas? They will disintegrate and go down uh, the same road to disaster because they will be ba they will be saddled with a fantastic role of supporting millions and millions and millions of unemployed people. And Butch, our national economy is heading for a very serious disaster unless the people wake up very soon and discover where we're headed. What do you think? I think this is absolutely right, Arnold. I know that 
you had a little uh, booklet there that you covered up a while ago that when our nation was first founded, it was set up by our forefathers on an American system, American economic system. And this is what's really wrong. They're trying to change our economic system that was set up by our forefathers, the system that was able to start America out here as a very small nation and just a very limited number of people to set up a sound economic policy that by the year of 1929, before the other big crash came along, which was brought on by international financiers that wasn't quite satisfied with the situation and, and injected this credit theory into America, that by 1929, this, we were 6% of the people of the world here in America. And by this time, through using our American economic system, we had created half of the entire wealth of the whole world. Think of this, this is right. Half of the wealth of the whole world, half of the dollars, more than half of the automobiles of the entire world, and things of this nature, a standard of living that was never heard of before in any of these other countries. But some of the people of the world weren't satisfied with this, and they brought this thing about through manipulation of the whole system. They tried to bring us down, and the same process is going on. Why don't you touch a little bit on this little booklet that we have available, Arnold, our American heritage <coughs> that lays this whole thing out, our economic system as it should be, as it was laid out by the Constitution of the United States and by the people that founded America. Touch on that just a little bit, Arnold. Well, Butch, I think that this little pamphlet is one of the greatest booklets that's ever been printed. It's called Our American Heritage, and the author is Carl Wilkin, an economist from Washington, D.C. He calls it a summary of the economy of the United States from 1787 through 1961. He says, under the Constitution of the United States, we have the right to elect those who determine the policies of government which affect our economic welfare. To be well informed, every citizen, every individual should read this vital message. Now, this book is available, this booklet is available for 50 cents, which includes the postage. And if you write to Butch Swaim at Corning, Iowa, or to Arnold Paulson, Granite Falls, Minnesota, we will be very happy to send you a copy. All of the proceeds of this goes to Mr. Wilkin and to the National Foundation for Economic Stability, who are trying to promote a strong and stable economy in this country. By all means, I'd like to see this in the hands of every high school student, every college student in America, because this is the answer to solving our national economic problems. Now, as long as we're on the subject book, but there's another report that has just been recently released. It's called The National Economy is Out of Balance by Professor John Forbes. Dr. John or Dr. Forbes. Dr. John Forbes of, uh, of uh, Illinois. Uh, actually, Dr. Forbes uh, conducted this survey or this research originally in an effort to find out whether or not the things that we have been saying are true. And just look at the fantastic amount of work that he's gone through. And the conclusion to his report, he says, Red and Butch, you people are wrong. We ask him how he figures that, and he says that the situation is worse than we say it is. Now, this is a report that is priceless. This is the original transcripts. If anyone's interested, write to either Butch Swaim at Corning, Iowa, or to Arnold Paulson at Granite Falls, Minnesota, and order a copy. They're not cheap. They sell for $5, but it's one of the greatest $5 investments you could ever want to make because he points out specifically where we're headed if we don't restore a well-balanced economy to our country. And he verifies the fact that the only way that we can restore a balanced economy is through agriculture, because agriculture is the key to our national economy. He also verifies the economic thinking of Carl Wilkin, who says that every farm dollar generates seven dollars of national income, almost double any other segment of the economy. And he goes into it and he proves it mathematically. And the source of, his, a source of reference that he has used is the economic report of the President of the United States, the only record that we can use because this contains all of the statistics of every segment of our economy. And what we would like to do is extend a challenge to every American, to every mathematician, every auditor, is to take a copy of the economic report of the pre President of the United States 
and run a balance sheet on it, something that too few people have ever done, and find out for yourself the condition of our national economy. Because if we don't do it now, when there's time to save the economy and to make the necessary corrections, there will only be one alternative, and that will be a depression which can be six times as severe as the one we had in 1929. Arnold, I'd like to uh, invite the people to get a copy of the 1965 President's Economic Report and check on page 203 and look at one column there, net interest. How much interest or money was left over uh, for the lending institutions because it's the key of what's really happened in America, because anyone with a fifth grade education can prove to himself by looking at that one column what really happened to our economy. <coughs> As farm prices went down, farmers were shortchanged, the nation had to borrow more and more money in order to keep the economy going. And according to this report, this net interest column went up from five and a half billion dollars in 1950 to 26 and 8 tenths billion dollars by 1964. Nearly five times as much. But the strange thing was that for 20 years prior to this, it averaged right around the five billion dollar mark. It didn't change very much. And when the balance, the economy's in balance, we earn the income, we don't have to have excessive credit, and the whole thing operates in balance. People have job opportunities and a chance to work and earn money instead of borrowing money to keep it going. Well, Butch, after uh, our visit to Washington just recently, I am convinced more and more that the only way we're going to solve this farm problem is that the farmers will solve it themselves by joining hands with one another and demanding a fair price at the marketplace. And I think probably one of the most encouraging things that has happened is when the grains, the national grains and the uh, National Farmers Organization jo joined hands in a united effort to help solve this problem. And in conclusion of this program, I would like to ask each and every farmer that's listening to this program to join hands with the National Farmers Organization and solve this problem the only way, and that's through the restoration of far fair farm prices at the marketplace. And those businessmen who are listening in today, if you're wondering what's happening to the economy of your community, your, your business, the problem is the price that's being paid to agriculture because this is where your community gets its new wealth and encourage the farmers in your area to fight and work together to help save not only agriculture, but the community in which you live. Thank you very much. Farm Report was brought to you by members of the National Farmers Organization, the NFO with interests and purposes of maintaining America's agricultural welfare which benefits the national economy, has brought to you How Your Community Gets Its Money with W.W. W. Butch Swaim, NFO National Promotional Director, and Arnold Paulson, Rural Businessman from Granite Falls, Minnesota. For more information on the NFO, attend meetings in your area or contact the National Farmers Organization, Corning, Iowa. Family Farm Agriculture, the grassroots of America.